So we know quite a lot about late Iron Age ritual and religion. Though it varied significantly across Britain, so there wasn't a single ritual practice that all people across even southern Britain were taking part in. It varied significantly with different practices. It seems likely that really Iron Age religion was more about kind of every day. So it was all mixed up with your everyday activities. You might kind of deposit, let's say, a, a votive offering to the gods for a successful trade or to bless a, a, a venture that you're going to do or bless a marriage or so, something along those lines. And it's kind of intertwined in everything that you did. We certainly know rivers and well, all watery places had some very significant meaning to, to them as kind of liminal zones, if you like, between some kind of spiritual world and the physical. So we get a huge number of objects being poured into rivers, into lakes. Really for Iron Age people, it was about the landscape as, as special places, not about specific kind of small areas, as kind of sacred spaces. Once we get to the late Iron Age, we see in Britain the first emergence of what we might call sanctuaries or temples. Those are very rare and they only occur at the very end of the Iron Age, but it does suggest there's a change in where people are undertaking ritual and how that's being conducted. So votive depositions being deposited on those sanctuary sites. That suggests a major change in the way ritual relates to power, because of course these are places now that you come to do ritual rather than doing it within the domestic sphere. We have to remember though, much of the practices that carried on for hundreds of years in the Iron Age continue to take place at the same time. We know that through treatment of the dead, we know that with some of the late Iron Age sanctuaries that emerged at the very end of the Iron Age, but also people in the countryside were doing something quite different perhaps to those living at centres like Camelodunum. So we have a variety of practices taking place, a ritual by the late Iron Age, different people doing different things, probably the same people doing different things in different places through actual activity. So who were the Druids? Well, we know really about Druids through the classical sources. So Caesar gives us quite a detailed description of them when talking about late Iron Age Gaul, so late Iron Age France. And then we have references in things like Tacitus later on, nearly 100 years later, talking about Britain. That's really how we know everything about the Druids. And it's clear from some of those sources that the role and the nature of those Druids changed over time. Even the Roman writers recognized that. Archaeologically speaking, it's incredibly difficult to identify those individuals because how would we see them in the archaeological record? Now, classical sources tell us that Druids are probably a combination of ritual specialists, philosophers, perhaps involved in some political decision-making. There are individuals who are buried with things that might suggest they were doing divination, for instance. The classic example given is the burial at Stanway. But many have suggested really that's just a doctor's burial. So they, the, the reason for the identification of it is a druid because there are doctor's equipment in this late Iron Age burial. Some of those, the rods associated with it have been argued as being dividing rods. But really we can't make that association. So the idea that this individual was a druid seems unlikely on that basis. Although some of the kind of priestly classes, if you like, that, that may have existed in Iron Age Britain, do seem to kind of come out of the woodwork a little bit when we look at Romano-British culture. And not too far away from here at Cavernham in Suffolk, actually, you get these wonderful crowns. Um, and there's a dozen or so, all quite different, but these kind of crowns that were worn by priests from the late first century onwards, really. How widespread that was, it's hard to say, but it does seem to have been a indigenous link there. There's an individual buried at Deal in Kent who was wearing a headdress. He's also buried with warrior's equipment. Some have suggested this is not a helmet, it's not a crown. Is he a ritual specialist? So those could be identified as druids, but again, it's very hard to know what we would see as the regalia of a druid. That doesn't mean that druids didn't exist. They're almost certainly by the late Iron Age ritual specialists, but identifying them archaeologically I think is very difficult. The discussion of the Druid always reminds us that what we have from the classical sources is this quite narrow insight into late Iron Age world. 
that we latch onto and really want to interpret where these things are happening. But actually, of course, that's just what was important to the Romans and what was happening in the kind of Roman conquest. Julius Caesar talks about allies of his, you know, who, who were Druids. And from this we get a sense, apparently, that Britain was the heartland, actually, of this kind of religion that's, that was centred on Druids. You would guess that there really was a priestly class of some description that were responsible for some of the re religious activity that would have occurred. And, you know, the obvious one that the Romans talk about is, of course, human sacrifice. Certainly there was sacrifice of humans in Iron Age Britain. We have plenty of burials where people have died violent deaths. Many of those seem likely to have not necessarily always been in warfare. Whether that's associated with Druids is, of course, another question. But certainly the fact that we have trauma on many human remains from various different contexts from Iron Age Britain suggests that people were killed in violent ways. Probably is some kind of sacrifice. But for many of those individuals, we sometimes think of sacrifice as being a terrible thing for that individual. But for many people who'd come to late in their life in Iron Age Britain, that might have been actually seen as propitious, that they were somehow being treated honourably for those individuals. So even from one of the own sites that I've worked on from the late Iron Age, we have an elderly female burial. Because she was old, she was clearly probably of quite status in society, remembering that people die relatively young probably in these societies. She was buried at a significant transition in the site, and that may be that she had actually gone willingly to that, to that death in those sites. So sacrifice certainly happened. Where it's difficult to know is whether that's related to the Druids in the way that we see from accounts by people like Julius Caesar. We don't know what place that had in society, but certainly sacrifices happened. Welcome to the History Hit YouTube channel, which we are relaunching. We've got all the best exclusive content going straight onto this History Hit YouTube channel. And you can find out, for example, why on earth I'm standing at the top of this mast. You should probably subscribe.